Um, so as a clinician and a scientist, I always feel that the clinician part comes first on a day-to-day -day basis. Mm -hmm. You know, if you have a patient that needs your attention right away, you have to leave life, leave off whatever you're doing to take care of that. So that's always the most important part. Um, however, for the long term, you know, is to try to find cures, discoveries, uh, new ways of treating patients. The researcher part is uh, is uh, is the most important. I see, you know, because without that, we will just be dealing with the same problems over and over again. So we need to find new ways to treat these problems. And so I see both of those facets as being very important in my life and 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 trying to uh, and trying to balance them becomes a major major issue sometimes. In the past, in a long time ago, when you talked about bench to bedside, um, the two realms were fairly separate. One of the main reasons was that the bench people were basic scientists and the bedside people were completely clinicians. There was a real lack of people that could span both, that could go back and forth. I mean, there were some, but there were not that many. I think. What has happened over the last 10, 15 years, even 20 years, is that we have trained more and more people that can talk both languages and they can translate. Mm -hmm. um, and so I think that that has been a one, the first step. The second step has been the knowledge of, uh, base of these tumors. So the knowledge that we have acquired related to these tumors has been primarily genetic knowledge. Right? We've learned a lot about the genetics of, uh, of a lot of brain tumors, but let me, let me focus my comments on glioblastoma, mm -hmm. which is the most malignant. We learned a lot about how these tumors, um, what, what are the genetic changes in these tumors, right? Mm -hmm. uh, and when I try to explain this to my patients, as I say, a tumor is like your computer, the genetics, the DNA is like the software. And in tumors, the software has been infected with a virus. It's been infected with malware or Trojan horse. And, and we don't know where, where that is. It can be anywhere in that software, in the code. And we're trying to find that out. And so DNA sequencing has been implemented and it's getting better and better to try to find all the changes in the genome mm -hmm. of these tumors. The thought was that once we know what these changes are, then we can logically and rationalize device therapy to fix those changes, right? Uh, and I think that that's where the term targeted therapy comes from. Once we know what the target is, we can figure out a therapy. The problem with glioblastoma as we do this is we now are learning that when you look at a glioblastoma, these tumors are not one thing. You know, and uh, and the way I explain this sometimes to my patients, if you look at a sea like Hamburg, if you are an alien, you look at Hamburg, you'd say, oh, they're all, it's populated by humans. They're all alike. They're all the same thing. And that's the way we used to look at this. We looked at these tumors like aliens saying, oh, it's a tumor. It's a tumor cell there. That's the same as a tumor cell there. It's the same as that tumor cell there. Now we learn that that is not the case. Every Hamburgian is different from the other. Yes. You know, we have different color hair, we adapt differently. And that's what we are learning with glioblastoma. Each one of those cells that's a tumor cell is very different from its neighbor cell. Mm -hmm.